becoming one. For of this reason, a man shall leave his mother and father and cleave to his own wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Becoming One, a program designed to strengthen marriages, challenge couples, and reignite our passion for loving, godly relationships. Join us as we discuss Kingdom Marriage Principles on Becoming One, hosted by the Sabazans. Becoming One. one. Becoming One For of this reason, a man shall leave his mother and father and cleave to his own wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Becoming One A program designed to strengthen marriages, challenge couples, and reignite our passion for loving, godly relationships. Join us as we discuss Kingdom Marriage Principles on Becoming One, hosted by the Sabazans. Becoming One. one, one, one. Becoming One For of this reason, a man shall leave his mother and father and cleave to his own wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Becoming One A program designed to strengthen marriages, challenge couples, and reignite our passion for loving, godly relationships. Join us as we discuss Kingdom Marriage Principles on Becoming One, hosted by the Sabazans. Becoming One. one. A pleasure to be back on Becoming One. Welcome to all those of you who are listening on YouTube, on Facebook, wherever you're listening. Welcome to Becoming One. We are the Sabbath Ends. Indeed. <laughs> awesome, awesome. I hope you guys are having a splendid time over there. I want to say thank you to our very special sponsor today, Nirvana El Spa. And they do so much things here. Detox Center and Natural Health Store. <laughs> so, uh, guys, I'm not sure where you're listening from, but we are streaming on multiple platforms currently. And um, we are also streaming on Hope FM Grenada. It's a pleasure to be here today. We are doing this program a little bit different this time around. Yeah. Um, when I say different, I don't mean like different. Well, as you can see, yeah, our background is different. Yeah, we are a different <laughs> setting today. You understand? Yes. And, guys, today, I mean, I want to encourage you to share this stream. Yeah? First of all, I wanted to share this stream. The reason why I wanted to share this stream, right, is because we have some goodies from our sponsor today for those of you who are tuned in. But the thing is, right, I know someone probably might not want to share because they might say, if you share, the possibility exists that, you know, more people look in. The less you can get. Price. But that's okay. That's okay. But we that's don't want okay. you to be selfish. That's okay. Share the stream with somebody. Somebody needs to hear about what we're talking about this evening. It's another very interesting uh, discussion for married couples. And don't forget, even if you I'm are single. planning to yeah. be married, you are you're single, but you want to be married someday. As a matter of fact, this, this um, topic that we have today is good for anybody, whether you're single, you're married, however you be. 
All right, so share it with a friend, share it with a family member, somebody that, that will really um, benefit from this conversation this afternoon. So let's not be greedy, let's not be stingy, but let's share. Share is indeed caring. Yes. And um, Melissa, what was the last conversation that we had? And I mean, you, you're saying, um, I'm saying, Melissa, what was the last conversation we had? The interesting thing is, you didn't introduce yourself. I am. DJ Sabi. I'm Lady Sabi. And we are the Sabi. 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 Truly, 
in marriages, I believe that there are times when you would need to, you know, have that difficult conversation. Yeah. Some people tend to try to avoid difficult conversations. Mm-hmm. I think I know why they try to avoid it. Oftentimes because, you know, difficult. yeah, well, not just because it's difficult. I think um, ideally because, you know, some people love some people so much and they're afraid to tell them the truth because sure. the truth might make them feel insecure. You understand? Yes. And um, it doesn't always have to be something bad per se, right? And that's just one angle to look at it because there are many other times when, you know, these difficult companies conversation or hard talks I would say in your marriage needs to happen. You understand? So we want to look at a couple of these this afternoon, this evening rather. So did you me? So again, um that's what life is about. Life is not just about all the roses. Remember roses also are pawns. Right? So as my hubby just said a while ago, the difficult conversations they are part of marriage. They are part of any kind of relationship. Right? So um we want to talk first about the things that make conversations difficult. All right, why really? Do, why do we really have to have difficult conversations? All right, why can't things just be cool and calm and easy and simple and happy and perfect all the time? Why? Well, one of the one of the one of the first reasons why we have these difficult conversations is because we have disagreements. All right, I am different. From my husband here, right? From from one, you can just look at us and see how we're different, right? He's tall, I'm short. Oh, <laughs> he have a bald head. I, I have long hair. I'm just looking at it physical for now. That's just physical. But if we go deeper, right? If we go deeper, you would understand there is so much more. All right, that we have. That and that is not necessarily common. Yes, we, we have things in common, but we just disagree because we have different in, difference in opinions, difference in the way we, we look at things. As a matter of fact, the way we grew up was different. The way I grew up and the way my husband grew up was different. So it means because we grew up differently, we were socialized differently, we grew up in a total two different um, villages. All right, our parents were not the same parents. <laughs> so it means we were socialized different. So think the way I would look at certain things, he would not look at it. All right, even if we were both born in Grenada. All right, it doesn't, it doesn't even matter if we were born in the same village. There are, things, there are times when we will disagree on certain things. And when we have disagreements, all right, disagreements can, for, for, um, can turn into actual. Um, you know, a little back and forth, you know, in my head. <laughs> uh, I think, um, yes. honestly, disagreements, they, it happens every, every and any type of relationship oh, yes. that we can think about. It That's happens at advice, the, yeah. you know, your working relationship, your friendship relationship, you know, um, in the daughter. professional space. Yes. But they do also happen in marriage and some people tend to you know not want to disagree you know um there's a scripture that talks about you know argument or walking together or even agree yeah and that portion here is taken from the book of Amos chapter 3 verse 3 it says what it says can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction all right, this is from the, I think this is the easy to read version, but we know it as, can two people walk together unless they agree? That's what the King James Version says. And it's, it's, it's so, it's such a beautiful portion because there needs to be agreement in order for us to walk together, in order for us to have the same vision, in order for us to, to make plans together to go in the same direction. Yeah. Because if we don't and, agree, we'll be going in opposite directions. <laughs> and you know, um, a lot of the times when, when you see these disagreements, like for example, people disagree over just about some little trivial things, oh, yes. and that becomes an issue because, for example, for example, let's say um, your husband grew up with his mom buying, buying um, blue curtains for the house. Mm-hmm. 
and that's that's all he he wants in his house yeah. because mommy bought blue curtains. Blue print orange but ones. Blue his ones. mom, his wife, now is saying, um, I want some white curtains. Mm. You know, what I mean, I want white curtains, and at that time, because he wants blue so bad, he want to set up for white, mm. but she wants. What? And he decided to so buy my house and the man of his house, I go and buy the blue curtains. You understand? And then <laughs> you have that type of situation where you now someone is uneasy because why? Mm -hmm. They don't get to have their way. So you have varying opinions and views, right. and that brings about that this argument. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's so strong. That somebody, when someone cannot get to have their way, it creates a big problem. And think about it in marriage, there's something called, and in some relationship, you need to learn to compromise. Sometimes, and when you're compromising, you need to think about, um, okay, I'm compromising because I'm seeing the big picture. Remember, our program is called Becoming One. So you need to see the big picture. You want to compromise because it's going to make your relationship better. That's right. You're not some people don't want to compromise at all. Mm -hmm. So now you don't have arguments. So how can two persons then walk together? Unless they agree. You understand? Mm -hmm. So you end up having a big problem there. Yeah. As and a matter of fact, the, 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 you know when a difficult conversation comes? Yes. When somebody decides to just make us like they be husband instead of saying, okay, what well, I prefer for you. Yeah. Let me have a conversation about my wife. Let me let's discuss, some it. Let's discuss yeah. it. Instead of, you know, he goes ahead and says, I want my blue cotton and I buy my blue cotton. Sure. I cut it. So then the cotton costs, you know, X, Y, Z, among the, maybe the wife has a reason why. And maybe if they sit together and they realize they're buying blue and white yeah. and both of them yes. have a movie. But yeah. they, they decide they're not talking about that now. Mm -hmm. One person he said, I'm going to buy my blue cotton or I'm going to buy my white cotton. And they, the difficult conversation comes about because somebody bets with somebody, somebody decided not talking to somebody, or maybe because you know, even that can lead up to things, you know, because you know, um, maybe the blue curtains cost a thousand dollars, and the husband didn't tell the wife how much the blue curtains cost. Ten months down the line, when she discover, look how much money spent on this curtain. That's a very difficult conversation to have, you know. But the thing is, it's so the thing is, if it might be. It's supposed to be a simple thing, a simple conversation. Any person can, you know, just simply sit and just talk. But I believe what makes some conversation very difficult is the approach with the team towards having that conversation. Yes. Um, and um, when I say that, I mean like all you want to have is your way, and you don't care about somebody else. Yes. Once you're in a marriage, brother or sister. You have to, you, you must think about the other person. It's like, you can't get past that. That's just... Marriage is not for you. It's that's for just... Us. You know? I find it for you. Know, like, uh, that's just... That's, <laughs> yeah, take my name with him. All right. Yeah. Once, 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 once the, the take yeah. my team yeah. here, I'm yeah. loaded. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good to go. Okay. All right? Yeah, but, so, um, yeah, yeah, so what I'm saying is that um, basically, sometimes the trivia things that people disagree thing. over, yeah, you know, and there's big confusion, and then you know, the night I come, mm, you know, it's all about you, and you know, yeah, that's it. That's a conversation that happens when the fingers start pointing yes. and the accusers start taking, start taking views, and the blame start coming up, and you know, you don't care about me because if I can't have weight, and ever since we married, in, in, you in, might in, say it's small, but listen, it, yeah. we, we might think it very trivial and very petty. Yeah. But believe it or not, there are marriages that break up over very petty and small things. Yeah. The little things turn into big things and bigger things until boom. Yeah. All right. I know marriages that break up, break up over, you know, somebody, just the little things. Listen, I want to watch and I'm not going to watch. You can't tell me for that and not for that I watch. Even the watch costs you for some You know? The little, the, the little disagreements. Why? Why must you buy that and we need this? Why must you? The little disagreements that it, that we cannot sit and talk about, they turn into very big problems. And then that difficult conversation comes about because somebody made decisions. Somebody, um, there was a disagreement hmm. that we could not, uh, we could not come to terms with. Nobody wanted to compromise, and as a result, somewhere down the line. 
they, they, there has to be some kind of difficult conversation yeah. that none of us want to have. All right. Because also, because because when you have these arguments, also what you find is that people keep sweeping or brushing things under the carpet. Sometimes yes. again, with these types of disagreements, especially for newlywed, mm -hmm. you know they tend to you know yeah you, you people get married two three months sometimes they're still in that love phase. You know it's all like oh it's yeah, okay it's okay, yeah. but in the back of the yeah. head they know they they're holding on to little bits and pieces, keep holding on to little bits and pieces. And as they continue to hold on to bits and pieces, it, it starts growing into big bits and pieces. And the rock can hold no more after a while. And then <laughs> you end up with a problem. Mm, there's a big, bump big, there. big problem. Mm. So when, when it's time to, to speak about things now, what Everything. you have happen is like, oh, you remember when you did this? And you did that? And you did that? Everything and you did this? Time, which should not be. Yeah. Which should not be. So you get it? Another um, thing that leads to difficult conversations is traumatic um, situations. Yeah. Eh? What, 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 when we say traumatic gone, situations, what do you. So yeah. people may have gone through trauma, mm -hmm. right? So let's say somebody lost a mother, a father, all right? Um, you know, you lose a child. Yeah. You went through rape. Um, you know, it's, it's a difficult conversation right in marriage so whether whether it happened while you were married mm -hmm. or it happened before you were married it's a difficult conversation in a marriage right. to talk about listen um you know um i was raped you know i and you know maybe in marriage mm -hmm. something happened and you got raped or you know something happened to, to the man and and you know something you know it, it's traumatic it brings yeah. trauma you lost a uh, a close friend that really meant a lot to you and, and you don't know how to deal with it. It's a traumatic kind of situation. You may have witnessed a murder. You may have witnessed something very um, unbelievable that brought trauma to your life. You could not believe what you saw or you could not handle what you experienced. And now as a couple, you have to sit down and talk about this. <laughs> as a, cu a couple, you have to have that difficult conversation. All right? So whatever it is, Romans chapter 8, verse 18 says... For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So this is the word of God reminding us that, you know, the things that we go through in life, by no means are we saying that the things that you may have been through, I go through, or whoever, um, you might be out there and you may have been through rape, you may have been through um, some kind of death, some kind of really traumatic situation. By no means are we saying that, that it's easy and it's simple and you should get over it right away. But, you know, exactly what the word of God says here in Romans 8 and verse 18, the sufferings that you go through now are nothing to be, it, it, it's basically, they're not worthy to compare with the glory that shall be revealed in us. All right, God has something great to show you or to for you to learn or some some great thing to come out of the the, the terrible, the worst, the the you know, this situation that you are going through now, no matter how difficult, how you know heartbreaking it is, God has something good coming out of this. There is some glory coming in the future. God has something great in store for you. All right, All right. So the traumatic situations can bring about difficult situ difficult conversations. All right. I think we have a little, just a little audio issue there. Um, just getting that sorted out real quick. Some people might not be hearing. They decide to be very, very, very loud. But um, it's all good. All right. So, right. So, guys, um, what we see in here? Trauma. Trauma. Trauma happens. You know, and um, trauma can vary, as my wife was saying, from person to persons. Death can happen, and that can leave somebody, you know, in a place where they become withdrawn. You know, and I say withdrawn is like there are times sometimes in the relationship where you would uh, probably want to just step aside and don't want to speak to your spouse. Um, maybe something happened in the day. And you, you, you saw, or you hear, or you're probably looking at a movie or something, and in the relationship, at that time, 
a button is like it's like a knob being pressed something goes off you know something happens and it's like mm, ow you remind me of that thing i know you have to deal with it but as a person who is rem who is remembering what happened sometime at that time your spouse wants your attention and um for years you're holding this thing inside and it's hard for you to even you know say to yourself yeah i i want to face it and sometimes the reality remains that your spouse cannot help you you know a lot of times people get married and they they think that they're married to a counselor they think that they're married to you know somebody who who just because they know how to pray they can solve all their problems you know what i mean and we're not saying that you can't find help and when someone prays that god will not hear and you know you will be able to be comforted when you mourn all right but what we're saying what i'm saying is that sometimes you need a counselor you need a you need a therapist you need someone to you know talk you through things you know and the more you hold it like there there's someone that i think i know um i've heard about years ago rather um the person got raped by a family member member was growing up and then it's like no we got married and while he's married no it's like every time they they their husband touch them in a certain way <laughs> it's like you bring back memory right and they, they they just they don't even know why sometimes because why they react in a certain way that is creating an issue in the marriage they don't know why <laughs> or maybe they know why but they just don't want to face it you understand what i'm saying they don't want to face it right and so because of that situations. and if the person yes. that they are married to don't if they don't understand that and they they didn't probably do the right thing at the time of my um courtship while they were you know um engage they didn't have it's these good, it's conversations good to reveal, it's good prior. To reveal these things yeah yeah have this conversation so prior that, yes to um, marriage marriage yes. <laughs> now you're going to the married in the marriage now and then it's like oh we have to deal with you have to deal with that yes no yes and what you find happening is that people will say oh you never said so to me before i, I feel like you you deceive me you know you hide that if i knew that was the thing i was going to be getting into then i would have probably not even considered that, marrying to a, you that's a difficult and you have remorseful that's feelings coming up yes no that individual also mm -hmm. knows faced with their own trauma so trust me some people just think um oh yes well let's get married but i don't believe marriage is for everybody right <laughs> <laughs> you know I don't, I don't, I firmly don't. I think people see marriage as, you know, the, the, the Cinderella stories and yeah. the, these fairy tale stories. It's like happily ever after you just get married to this person and then everything is perfect. Perfect and nice. After, yeah. You know, marriage is something to be worked on. Yeah. There are difficulties. There are difficult days. As we said at the beginning, we're two different person we have two different personalities we're two different persons we come from two different backgrounds mm. there's a lot of working out to do mm. there's a lot of becoming one to do yeah yeah for real. <laughs> yeah so it's not everything doesn't just click like that and everything is just perfect mm. when you get into marriage so but what we're trying to say is that whether or not and preferably you should have that conversation before you get married of a rip yeah. this is something that your partner needs to know no, before yeah. you get married this is something that your husband to before be you say, your, your wife to be because men do get raped too right yeah yeah <laughs> you need to um let the person know um talk about it to get some counseling these are some things that we need to talk about before marriage but perchance because there might be somebody out there today that you did not disclose such to your partner you did not let them know look um some way 
you know, when I was a teenager or maybe as a very young person, I was raped, I was molested, whatever the case might be, it might be some, you know, traumatic situation. Mm -hmm. And all of this is also a part of, of, ba of past, past baggage, baggage eh? yeah. right? Things happening in your past and, and you need to have that conversation. So whether or not, yes, you made the mistake, you did not disclose it mm -hmm. to your husband or wife to be, but you need to have that difficult conversation. Whether or not you, you, you want to have it, you need to have it. Because if, as my husband said, if you leave that thing there by itself, it's it like, it's mm -hmm. like getting, putting dust under the mat. It's like sweeping dust under the mat, sweeping dust. Because as your marriage goes along, there would be things that, you know, something is wrong here. Your, your husband, your wife would find nah, something wrong. Some, there's something that is just not clicking. All right. And things would always go wrong if you're not being truthful, if you're not opening up to your spouse. So it is very important, as difficult as it may be, to have the difficult conversation. Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, in marriages, sometimes people make bad decisions. You know, I mean, we talk about um, disagreements earlier on, but there are times when people make bad decisions poor choices uh -huh. you understand and um <laughs> some people make these poor choices because of the counsel that they get True. from friends maybe from their their peers um friends peers whatever they, they get it from members, their family member yeah. um somebody they look up to mm -hmm. you know what i mean so some people make bad and poor choices maybe even based on how you grew up mm -hmm. maybe to you Having a certain thing is the best thing in the world. And you just decide, listen, I always wanted to have this. Or I always wanted to do that. Right. And you just decide that is the best decision. But it <laughs> and you didn't think it through. All right? Yeah. So we just want to encourage you today. Um, you know, there are times when you make that bad or poor choice. Mm -hmm. You know, oftentimes people tend to, they're so embarrassed of it that they avoid the conversation mm -hmm. because they don't want to deal with their wrongs. Mm -hmm. You understand? And sometimes, boy, it's just, you know, the bad, the wrong thing that you do, you need to, you need to face up to, you know, be a big man, be a big woman, and be accountable. Mm -hmm. And responsible. For the mm -hmm. things that you do. Mm -hmm. as, difficult, as difficult as it may be, you need to be accountable. You need to be, you know, saying i am wrong and it's okay what sometimes you find people do is that okay so let's say you have a problem in your relationship and um with that problem right you make a decision because you didn't like and you didn't take the time to have that difficult conversation with your spouse or your partner so what you do now as a result of what is happening, you, you, you just decide, I'm going to make a choice to do something because of that. Now you go ahead and you make your choice. But the choice you make now should have been maybe to say, well, let's get help. Let's discuss this because, you know, this is not helping us. Because sometimes people come into relationship, again, as you said, with their past baggage. And you don't know why they are acting the way they are acting because they hide that thing for so long until it becomes the normal. And then when you get to know more about them, why it's been in that relationship, you realize, wait now, I think I'm married to somebody totally different to who I thought I was getting married to. True. So in that time, you are now in a, in a situation where, you know, you're observing, you know, your pain, your, your, your mind is like, what's oh, really going on? A lot of questions in your mind, but the individual continue to act away. Maybe you, you choose to confront them about it and say to them, you know, well, why are you acting that way? What's going on with you? And the person might then respond in a kind of rough manner, sure, kind of push you away, like, you know, <laughs> don't talk to me. Um, what do you think this is? Because then obviously they have something that is hurting them or they have something to hide. You understand? And um, normally when that individual is going through the thing, sometimes they become very insecure that they will start treating their spouse in such a way as if their spouse is doing what they are doing or, or experiencing what they are experiencing, all right? And then you, you cannot have that conversation. 
because the person probably just hiding something. You understand? So after, after you've been in that situation for so long and you're not understanding what's going on with your spouse, maybe you're not even speaking to anybody because you don't want nobody to know your business. You're not seeking help knowing. Instead, you decide to just act or rather you just decide to, to react to what is being, you know, mm -hmm. um, what you are receiving, yes. you react as a result of that and you do something really stupid. Now, remember the individual is already in their bad place. You never take time to see how you can assist your spouse. What I mean, just praying for them and keeping in mind that you have a covenant with marriage is concerned and you want to make sure that whatever you do, it is in, you know, in, in line. line. Will of God. But instead, you make mm -hmm. a bad decision now to probably step out of your marriage or probably to find that comfort that you're not getting there somewhere else. And as a result of that, what you do? Now, your own may come to light. So now, yours are the, are the, yours shining brighter than the person issue. So you see, that's where, you know, when you avoid having difficult conversations, it can come back to blow up in it your face. It complicates the matter. It complicates the marriage altogether. <laughs> yes. And then two of all, you can't speak because both of all, they're pointing finger at each other. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, right, there's a scripture in the Bible somewhere in Matthew that talks about... um. You want to take out the beam in my eye, the speck in my eye, mm -hmm. but you don't realize you have a beam in your own. Right. Right? So you say, well, take out the one that's in your eyes first so that you'll be able to see clearly and to help, help the other person that have that thing in their eye. Yes. Yeah, right? Little, little speck. So <laughs> the reality is, is like, sometimes we need to become a little, not sometimes, but it's wise when you're in a relationship that you, you mind your business and your business is the marriage. And when minding your business, you don't want to become that condemning individual that, you know, whatever you, how you choose to address the matters, whether it be past baggages, whether if somebody make a bad decision, whether it is that, um, is a traumatic situation. You understand? Whether it's that disagreement, the way how you choose to address that situation by conversing is very important. So some people just decide to just come out and because they feel hurt, or because they've been through something, maybe they even do something, they start acting weird. And bro, I telling you, oh my sis, I say bro. But <laughs> at the end of the day, that 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 little thing turned out to mess up the entire marriage. Mm. You know, and then the thing is when you go so long without having um intervention from the right pe people, as so we talk about mm -hmm. bad counsel, because sometimes you or you get you get counsel from um the wrong individual at that time. And what it does is that it causes you to become mm. even more bitter and that it just keeps messing up your relationship over and over again. So it is a lot, I know, but um, you need to know the right steps to take in order to you know, overcome these issues and problems that may arrive in your relationship, in your relationship, your marriage. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So again, the difficult conversations will come. Mm -hmm. All right. There's no if, and, or but, as we would say normally. Yeah. All right. Because there is no perfect, there is no perfect relationship here on earth. Mm -hmm. All right. There would always be times where you disagree. There would always be times where um, things will come up that you don't quite you know, I like, you don't like, mm -hmm. certain things happen that we have to talk about, we need to discuss, but the important thing is to have the conversations. We cannot run away from the difficult conversations. I know in marriages and in any relationship, you have different personalities and they would be the one who likes to talk. <laughs> <laughs> and they might be the other one who is a little bit less talkative. But All right. you see, you got to know your yes, partner. Yes, you if have you to know. If you right? don't know your partner, then what do you but think would happen? at the end of the day, the conversations have to happen. These difficult conversations must happen, and they will come up. All right? They will come up. So we have to learn how to deal with these, these things, the past baggage. As we said before, people go through things in life. You come into a relationship, you are not a perfect person. 
all right? You, things happened in your past. You had past relationships. You had um, past hurts, past pains. Things happened. You were socialized in a certain way. You expected certain things in the past. You did certain things or you didn't do certain things, all right? And based on that, you need to have the, dif the difficult conversations. You lied in the <laughs> past. Maybe you were some kind of con artist, <laughs> in yeah. the past you had a past life <laughs> all right that you didn't want anybody to know about yeah you know but you need to sit down this is your spouse this is your husband this is your wife you need to let them know that this is what happened i robbed a bank 10 years ago i robbed a <laughs> bank um i didn't want you to know because it is not xyz it would make me look bad you probably would, wouldn't want to get married to me because of that and even if i'm saying again I'm reiterating what I said in the beginning because these conversations need to happen. A lot of these conversations, maybe not all, but most of them need to happen before you get married because there are certain things that you need to disclose to your husband or your wife. It has to be fair to them. All right? You cannot, uh, you know, it, think about yourself. You don't want to get married to somebody without knowing certain things. So you, in, in the other person's shoe, you don't want for them to get married to you not knowing certain <laughs> things. It is unfair, all right? So some of these or maybe all of these conversations, certain conversations need to happen before you get married. But even if you didn't have them, they need to happen, all right? These conversations need to happen, all right? They, it, 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 it has to happen. All right. You just need to figure out how, when, where, <laughs> you know, how you're going to go about. And we're going to talk about that in a bit. Right. Awesome. We need to so discuss guys, that. Um, once again, if you tuned in via Hope FM Grenada, I want to say good night to you. And um, thank you again for making Hope FM your choice. If you're viewing on our Facebook page, YouTube page, uh, wherever you're tuned in right now, good night to you. And do take an opportunity to share this stream with someone, especially a married person. Oh, but yes. You can also put it on your status, you understand, and share it with somebody that you, you believe it might just be just be the, the thing they need to hear Yes. at this time. Oh, yes. All right. So this is sharing is caring because we also want to share later, not too long from now. All right. We want to share something awesome with somebody tonight. So... Um, compliments our sponsor, as you can see in the back of us. We're here yes. inside. Those of you guys just Nirvana. tuning in, we're yeah. not in the studio tonight. Yeah. We're in this beautiful, wonderful space. Yep. You know, it's a spa, Nirvana. Yes, yeah, it's, right. it's more than just a spa. Yes, it's called Nirvana Health Spa, it's a detox, detox center, center, and natural, natural health, health store. store. So, All right. so many things here. Beautiful ambience and everything. Maybe next program, if we are allowed um, by our sponsors, we have them come on and display some of the you know products that they believe um <laughs> people should really get in touch with some other natural natural um products that Hold they have here right. yeah yes. you can tap into that and some of the cleanse that you can use as an alternative form of um treating yourself to become a healthier person in All this right. time so we're here talking about difficult conversation in marriage again i am dj sabi this Lady is really sabi and we are the sabazans all right so, Lady Savvy, you good? So, at this time, we want to take a quick break. All right. So, our tech guy will take a word from our sponsor. You can read what's on the screen. On the screen. Screen? The screen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back to tell you more about the sponsor again. Yep. All right. Stay tuned. <laughs>
right, and we are back. That was a quick, uh, uh, I wouldn't say a word, but just a display, <laughs> a quick ad. A display of mm -hmm. what it is um, Nirvana has to offer. So, here. guys, again, all right, we're here at this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place called Nirvana Health Spa. All right, detox you. center right. and natural health store. You got All right, it. Let, got let me let me it. say it again. I want to get you the name it. correct. So right now we are in All the spa. Right? Yes, but there's another aspect to it, All and right. there's another aspect to it. All right. So the entire place is a is Nirvana Health Spa, detox center, and natural health store. All right, and as we read a while ago, we're going to highlight some of the, the services, things, the they services offer, that yeah. they offer again. All right, they offer couples and regular massages, couples and regular pedicures and manicures. They also have a couple spa day. All right, you go ahead. Yeah, sorry. They also have um, male and female body packages, uh, self care packages colonic hydrotherapy, that's it. Detox mm -hmm. programs, kidney cleanse, liver cleanse, colon cleanse. Mm. <laughs> what do you need to clean? Uh, all of those things. <laughs> <laughs> all of those things. Yeah, we have full body cleanse, skin cleanse, gallbladder cleanse, male herbal product for hormones issues. And also female herbal products for hormone issues and herbal vitamins, herbal tonics, herbal supplements, and loose herbs all right yeah. so a wide range of products that you can get from novana and again if i give you it in lehman tums they are located in the grand Anse area um i know most of you guys you know going to grand Anse, close to the newly installed traffic light you know close to uh food fair food fair right yeah, so we so call this this building the regency commercial you can't suite. miss it you can't miss all it right. right not too far from the old um building close to the gas station so i'm just giving you a little pointers you know mm -hmm. markers where you can actually find opening hours yeah. from 9 a.m to 6 p.m mm -hmm. monday to saturday all right and the spa is only on sundays so we they only have spa sorry on sundays, sundays yeah. from 10 to 5 p.m all right okay so again guys as we see we said earlier on sharing is caring yes we're asking you to share the life but apart from that apart from sharing the life yeah. we want to share something with you tonight from our sponsors and there is something in store for a couple all right and there's something for a single individual okay so you, you heard all the services we mentioned guess what you can't have all of them but <laughs> You might just be able to qualify for two or three from those. You can come on down to here um, at Nirvana's and have yourself an awesome time. Come in looking kind of way, in a kind of way, and go looking in a real nice way. Right. Yeah, I mean, yes. <laughs> you just come in looking one and, way. And come in feeling a kind of way yeah, and, and going, going out, out feeling, feeling a different way. kind of I mean? way. Nice yeah. and relaxed. That's if it. you know what we're talking about, eh? Yep, yep, yep. So we got some prizes to give away. You got to keep um, looking and tuning into the program. We let you know when that time comes that you can actually call in and win yourself a prize. Actually, tonight we have two prizes that we're giving away. Yeah, yeah. We didn't we give have... any prizes yet, though, eh? No, we're not giving it away as yet, yeah. but I'm just letting them know. One for a couple, one for a lucky couple, mm -hmm. and also... A single individual, yeah? Right. Right. So, Lady Sabi, we want to turn Jump things up a in. little bit into the conversation. I'm going to say good night to Leah Warm and Victoria Thompson, my brother Chad. Those are you guys who are tuning in on my page. Um, Royal Impress, Brofwit, good night to you. Brother um, Otter, brother night, Otter, night. the prayer family, good night family, and everyone tuned in right now yes. at this time. Do take an opportunity to share the stream. If you're tuned in via Nirvana's page, good night to you also. Um, this might look a little bit new, but we're here talking about difficult conversations in, in marriage. marriage. Yeah, <laughs> if you're married tonight, I'm sure you probably had or will have at some point a, a difficult, difficult conversation. conversation. And good to know. It's mm -hmm. good to know how to handle those things that you don't want to talk about. Mm. But like that, yeah, you know, some people don't want to talk about some things. Yeah, well, there's some things you just don't want to talk about. <laughs> you don't want to face certain things. Yeah, it's yep. the truth, everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I and mean, we have a scenario so, we'll be jumping into a little later. Yeah. And guess what? You have an opportunity to call when we tell you that. You can call 
And um, based on the answer you give, you might be the recipient of that um, gift card from Nirvana tonight. All right. Mm -hmm. So, Lady Sabi, let's continue with our conversation. All right. Mm. So, we've been talking about all the things that could happen mm -hmm. to lead up to difficult conversations. And right. we included things like disagreements. We said you can have traumatic situations in your life, bad decisions. Mm -hmm. All right. We have past baggage, what happened in your past. Also, lack of communication. Eh? Poor communication or lack of communication. If yeah. you are a couple that you cannot communicate, you don't know how to talk about certain things, you don't know how to tell, okay, listen, I find <laughs> you're, you're leaving up the toilet seat too much or I find... But that's not that difficult to yeah. No, no, no. I'm some just, people I'm might just <laughs> not like to, to freeze that and they might just be like, you're antagonizing me, Jed. Oh, is that? Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Don't tell him thing. But Remember when you say, what we said earlier? When you say that, the little thing when you say add that, up to the big But when you say there. that, you know, um, with the toilet and thing, I feel like you point your finger at Listen. me, man. You mustn't do them things on life program. <laughs> I didn't know you just make the whole world discover yourself. Yeah, so <laughs> I you didn't see, say anything. <laughs> and that's how sometimes those things can happen when you're at home. Oh. Um, every time this man only leave no be toilet, leave no be toilet. <laughs> yeah, I know how you feel. It's not him alone using it. And then when he come now, not just the last time I tell you about that. And then you started dealing with the man like a little boy. I don't think she just trying that thing. No, no. You know, but I don't like people talk to me hard just the same way. So based on what she had the mercy, well, you know, you're not in school teaching those children. You need to get this right. But you Take know, down your teacher's voice. at the same time, again, again, if you don't know your partner and your spouse, the tone can mislead you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes again, so that's a part of communication, communication. and that's, your, what, we, that's what we're getting at. Yeah? Communication is very important yeah. because sometimes people just decide to, you know, just open their mouth and just say anyhow. And sometimes your partner don't want to feel. come. Sometimes your wife or your husband decide I'm not talking to you about anything because every time I try to talk to you, yeah. you have this way about you, your, your tone. Yeah, but then no, you you're, you're sit on there again and you, and you bag up you bag up everything. Mm -hmm. And one day you explode and you start talking about the time when you told us it was up, the time when he wash the dishes, the time when you come mm -hmm. when you get no supper, the mm -hmm. time when um, you wanted money and he pretending he didn't have any and, and she pretending mm -hmm. that, the time when you also wanted to make love with your wife and she wanted to go and sleep or something, she tired. Mm -hmm. Them things are so you need to learn to communicate. Them communication. Because yeah? if you don't know how to do that, you can end up in a in a serious, you know, in a kind of place. Yeah, so, so yeah. the difficult conversation will come as a result of that, eh? Mm -hmm. Because if you, if there is a lack of communication, meaning that you're not talking, you're yeah, not that's saying it. anything. That's it. And you're giving right? the non-verbals. Yeah. Like, you know, people, like little children, mm -hmm. you're walking around the house and you ain't saying nothing. The they say something to you. They quiet, just, quiet, quiet, quiet. You just shrug in your shoulder and just... <laughs> just the one thing I would like to leave at this point with any person mm -hmm. listening, um, whether you're married or not, mm -hmm. right? It is so important to start to, to speak. Mm -hmm. To speak, speak but up, also speak, speak in such a way that you're saying, listen, I love you, my spouse, whoever it is speaking, and I want our relationship to work. Mm -hmm. I am not speaking because I'm trying to don't play you or make myself look better because I might be stronger in that area. So mm -hmm. I have to I have to belittle you by the way I what I by what I see and how I know, see and, it. Uh, and I want I intentionally you know being sarcastic and just you know understand these are the things that happens. And then again on the flip side, if it happens to you, why are you going to go and tell your 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 your, your friend or why on the other hand go to a female. If you're a male and your wife is don't she's speaking down to you like that or vice versa, you go and tell some other part, you know, and they realize, well, oh, you know, I realize that's your weak point, and the person start to play on you. I'm just saying, guys, don't open doors for the enemy to come in. Mm -hmm. You understand? There is an enemy of for against marriage, an enemy against marriage, and you need to keep that in mind. All right. So we, oh, yes. we want to move on because we realize the time is moving really fast. Uh, we just head over to the second hour. So Yeah, but we want to talk about some of the mm -hmm. difficult conversations that you may have to have. Right. All right. So we, we did speak about things that can lead up to difficult conversations, but we just wanted to be able to highlight, yeah. you know, one or two difficult conversations because you might be saying to yourself, you yeah, yeah, they're talking about difficult conversations, but tell us a little bit more. What, what kind of difficult conversation can you have in a marriage? Yeah. yeah. All right. So we came up with this first, um, this first scenario here. All right. Preparing for 
or recovering from the debt of a loved one. Yeah. So you could be in a marriage, right? And debt, all right? Debt is never, ever hmm. um, an easy thing to face, right? If, if you find out that, for instance, you have a loved one that is going to die, mm -hmm. right? Let's say they have some kind of terminal illness. It could be a mother, a father, a child, yeah. your own spouse, all right? That, that, that in itself... Or if you have experienced, all right, so you're in a marriage and your mother or father died, a child died, and somebody that is close to you, somebody that means a lot to you. Mm. How do you sit? How do you have that conversation with your spouse regarding that kind of situation? That is a very difficult situation to have, a difficult yeah. conversation rather. Yeah, and... Um... You know, some people might, well, you know, as I, I, I remember we were in a barber shop the other day and I, um, I was just talking about um, this program a bit that we were about to have. And, and my partner in the barber shop said something to me. He said, um, well, just give me a little snippet of something you guys are going to talk about and thing. And, and I said to him, oh gosh, well, you want me to, to expose, you know, the decatory bag and thing. He said, nah, just give me something. So I said, okay, for example, debt, debt. And, um, Instantly, he could have he connected and he said that um, in relationship, his observation is that women tend to carry the, the baggage of data a little heavier than men. I beg to differ to a certain extent because I feel like men maybe just express themselves a little Less, bit different yes. to women. Yeah. And men may tend to, you know, even when hold they grieve, they may not just hold not on talk to it. About it. But, um, and not just not talk about it, but maybe men sometimes they bury themselves. Men who are not like you know um, of the faith, for example, because a man of the faith might might most likely um, seek counsel, maybe hopefully, and um, probably pray more fast and do what he can to get closer to God. Whereas, and sometimes that brings people closer to God too, in terms of um, how they respond. So they might mm -hmm. respond by saying, "What you know what." I need to get my life right with God. So let me get closer to him because I see how that person just died and I love them so much and I wonder where they're going. But then again, you have those that dead draw them away from God in the relationship. And when somebody is don't have a relationship with God, then you can the enemy can come in and do whatever he wants. So that can happen. And um, men, sometimes they bury themselves in numbing um, age and so to speak. Mm -hmm. So to, to numb the pain of the loss that they experience mm -hmm. sometimes they go towards drinking um alcohol and you know doing all sort of things they they may have been quite a good individual but sometimes they become promiscuous oh is it what promiscuous promiscuous Prom yeah yeah thank you thank <laughs> you this i know you didn't sound right but anyway um that's it sometimes they just people do things when they are facing situations mm -hmm. and um again again when you're married then sometimes if you don't have that conversation with your wife you might just start acting a certain way and then they don't even know why you're acting that way mm -hmm. but because of the pain that you feel inside and um that's the way you think you can express yourself you know but um yeah. death really is a difficult thing to face especially if it's as we said somebody that means a whole lot to you a son yeah. a daughter you know your your own um mother your father Right? How do you talk to a spouse? You 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 seen your spouse hurting, mm -hmm. you know, in that kind of way. They lost their mother, their father. They lost. You, you both lost a child. Mm -hmm. How how do you sit and deal with that? But the conversation needs to happen. So this somebody, is a difficult. So they might, somebody might say, um, like, oh, you know, long your father, your mother die, and it's mm -hmm. like you're still holding on to that. Mm -hmm. I mean, this thing is affecting listen, our relationship, and then. At the same time, the individual you're speaking to is looking at you as being very insensitive yes. because you're still grieving the loss of your loved one. Listen, you I've, I've heard somebody say, listen, I've, I lost my mother when, when I was three years. So I, I know about that. So I don't know what they're hurting. So how you deal with a situation is not necessarily how somebody else will deal yeah. with a situation. So you cannot say, um, yes, you may understand how they feel, to a certain extent, 
but everybody grieves and deals with debt and situations in different ways. Mm -hmm. So it's unfair for you to say to somebody, um, just deal with it. Just deal with it. Or, I went knowledge. through that yeah. and I didn't behave so, or whatever the case. We, mm -hmm. we have to learn to be sensitive to others when they are going through difficult times. And yeah. again, you know, we, we came up with this little scenario here. We said, suppose, you know, suppose your spouse and your child both have a, a condition mm. that requires them to have a kidney transplant, mm. right? You happen to be a perfect match. Yeah. You happen to be a perfect match, but you could only give away one kidney, <laughs> right? Either of them, you know, they can die if you don't, if you don't, re if they don't receive a, a kidney. And it was All right, but you it, are the perfect match. And then the, the next part of this situation, you don't have the money. You don't have money to afford. Um, you don't have the money to afford a donor. So That's you a, can say, um, it's like saying, okay, I have, I have one kidney. My wife and my son, God forbid, they have an issue with their kidney, and now both of them need a kidney in order to live. You know, you might say, well, you have to choose, or maybe you might say, well, I, I can give my wife the kidney and I can pay the money so or I can get donors, I can get a donor for my son so I can have both of them. Now, your wife might say, well, I prefer my son, your or son get it because, you know, Difficult he's the young one there and, and then uh, I live my life already. Your it, husband it, might be like, well, I love you and we could make another son. You understand what I'm saying? Then that's a difficult and then, conversation. So... And you could imagine like the, the sleepless nights over those things, knowing mm -hmm. that um and it was part sometimes the doctor might tell you there's a 50-50 a chance that even though you give that kidney, it doesn't mean that they would survive very yeah. long. So it becomes very technical at that time mm -hmm. because you now have to make a decision. And um you now have to again, have that you conversation, have have that conversation about death and life. Yes. You understand? It's a difficult one. Yeah. It's a difficult one in choosing marriage. Choosing who you, you, who, you, you want to live without. Yeah, who you got to choose who you would live without. Who do you choose? Even the, you know, recently, um, and I'm not sure if I should talk about this, but, you know, sometimes um, people, you know, they, 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 they lose children, mm -hmm. right? They have to choose, okay, if something should happen while I'm, I'm giving birth, mm -hmm. all right? Um, should you choose the child? The child or choose. Should you choose me? Yeah. Would I die or let the child live? Or what, 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 should, what should happen? That's a difficult conversation, mm -hmm. all right? Um, you know, just to add a little humor to it, I know of somebody in particular, um, a friend of mine that said one day she had a dream. She had a dream. <laughs> She had a dream that um, something similar to this, that I can't remember if it was a kidney or a liver, something, some mm. part that she had two of. She dreamt that um, both her children needed um, kidneys. I think it was kidneys or something, something that she had two of. And in the dream, she was, um, they were saying, Lord, they were trying to decide who, who to give to. And she said, no, there's no decision in this. I give in both of all you. I go just die. <laughs> so just to, uh, it sounds funny. Yeah. It sounds like no, that's impossible. But in her, in her dream, that's, but in her that's, dream, that's what she said. Listen, you know, I, don't, I, I give in both of all. Yeah, yeah I yeah. go just die. Wow. You know. So, um, but it it comes to to this this talking about all of this helps us to understand that there are difficult conversations, conversations yeah. in marriage. Yeah. All right. It's not just about the, the, the surface things. We're talking about deep things, life and death situations, things that will hurt. All right. These are difficult conversations. All right. Another <laughs> one as we want to move along very quickly yes. is that issue with money. And uh, my brother Otto was reading our notes. Yes. And so he stated Otto, that. Um, maybe he heard debt and he thought it was D E B T. Uh, maybe, you know, H. but he <laughs> said issue with money, as a, you know, he says um, basically that is. Yeah. That is a real issue. Yeah. And tonight there's a term. I was like, I was driving one morning and I said to my wife, yeah, um, what about, like, you know, in the process of preparing for this program, what about financial infidelity? I said, I wonder if that's even a thing. And then she was like, nah. Diana, Diana, no, we just don't. That's not a in. word. That's not a word. We ain't come up with that. We ain't come up with that. You know, so I've never <laughs> really heard the term before. But it exists. So I decided, yeah, let me just see if this word exists. I said, well, just Google it and see what we get. 
And then, boom, voila, there was something on financial infidelity, infidelity and utter talk the term about um, <laughs> You know, money, the money, money thing. So let's just look at this word a little Those bit. Those are difficult conversations. And then we'll go into a scenario spilling off of this, right? Remember, guys, there is something on the table for you to, to win. win tonight. <laughs> so, again, do take this opportunity to share this stream and stay with somebody tuned. And stay stay tuned. tuned. All right. So, Lady Sabi, um, Talk about it. Financial infidelity. So we got this term of um, the internet from um, choosingtherapy.com. Yeah. All right. It was an article by Robert Hino. I can't even pronounce the name. Hinojosa. Maybe yeah, it's yeah, yeah. probably Spanish or something. Yeah, you go there. <laughs> um, but they define, he defined financial infidelity as um, something that occurs when couples lie to each other about money matters. Mm. It can include things like hiding debt, hiding big purchases, lying about income. Financial infidelity can drastically affect trust between partners and the financial stability of a relationship. All right. So anything so, like hiding debt, hiding big purchases, you're lying about your income, all of that is <laughs> terms on the financial infidelity. Wow difficult conversation so you want to ask that question <laughs> have you been um a financial <laughs> have you committed financial financial infidelity yeah right? in it's, your relationship in your yeah, marriage in your marriage it's it's a difficult conversation it's some some couples decide listen my husband should not know how much money i'm making Right, <laughs> my wife should not know that I have this this extra thing on the side, whatever. XYZ. You understand? I like how you say it. Yeah. Eh? Why should you know? Yeah. You know, your spouse shouldn't know that you have that extra thing on the side. Yeah. So you get the idea when you talk about financial mm -hmm. infidelity, because really and truly, infidelity on the other hand, where relationship is concerned, um, partner to partner is when someone is having you know this extra um, relationship on the side. So think about financial infidelity along that line where you are hiding mm -hmm. matters regarding your finances. Mm -hmm. You understand? No, I just, mm -hmm. just to interject a little bit. I heard of a couple that was married, mm. right? And the husband, I don't know how, well, I don't know. Well, it's, it's financial infidelity indeed, mm. right? He bought a whole car. I was, it was only until... So he went through the whole loan process, whatever, thing, thing, that, that, the other. And it was only until he drove the car home that his wife discovered he, he has a car. Well, the man may say he's he a big a man. Car. Maybe he wanted to surprise his wife. Again, <laughs> um, this term may not be, um, mm -hmm. I would say, applicable to every marriage situation. Mm -hmm. Because some people have long agreed upon how they would spend their money yes um, that's different by the time yes. that they 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 got married or before they got married right um we will have a fund that is for home and i will do whatever i want with the difference mm -hmm. and that's okay but if you have an agreement in place where you said here's what we we'll put all our eggs in the same basket and then share them in different places and mm -hmm. we will know we will know what we have and as we'll a family open, and we'll be, be open, open and real. To and then it. tomorrow you are doing something totally different with the money mm -hmm. because you figure, well, my wife or my husband, whoever it is, your spouse trusts you so much that you don't, they don't watch what you're doing because they believe what you said and what you guys agreed to. And then you know you're doing something else behind their backs, behind their mm -hmm. back. Then, you know... You're being an infidel you're, you're practicing infidelity with the finances mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you need to look into that because they say money thing is a funny thing mm -hmm. imagine you you know in fact let's just read that scenario and we'll open up the discussion for someone to call or you know two so, persons to call and just tell us how you think you might handle such a situation as we're talking about um this is your opportunity infidelity. to win guys this yeah? is your opportunity to win um earlier on we spoke about it and we said that we have two prizes to give away yeah all right we have first of all a couple's prize so one for, for couples and the other one is for a single person mm -hmm. all right that single person could that single person be married to 
Uh, well, yeah, the person the could person be a married could be married. individual. That's but okay. one, so one of the prizes is for a married yeah. couple. So the so married the couple husband gets and wife. the prize. So what we want, right. when you call tonight, you need to have your spouse next to you. And um, yes, you need to address the questions. We'll put the questions. We'll tell you the question before. We'll ask you the question before you call. So you get an opportunity to decide whether or not you want to call. And you will win yourself. I give certificate compliments. Nirvana right. Health Spa. And this one will be compliments the Health Spa. Indeed. Not necessary from the um the 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 detox, uh, detox center or the um right. the hobo store. Right. What's it? Did I say the hobo store? Let me get this right. My bad. Yeah, not necessary from the detox center or the health store. So this right. one will come from the um the, the health, health spa. spa. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So all right, so guys, listen up carefully. All right, we let you know when you can call in, but here is the scenario, right? So imagine that after 10 years of marriage, one day you saw a letter in the mail from a bank and decided to open it. In opening the letter, which turned out to be a bank statement, you discover firstly that the, the account number does not match any of the account numbers that you know of. And secondly, several questionable transactions of large sums of money coming into the account. The questions are, what would you think? What should you do? <laughs> and how do you start this conversation with your spouse? All right, I'm going to read over the scenario because we, we really want you to call in. All right, remember you're calling in with your spouse. All right, you're calling in with your spouse. If you're calling by yourself, you can only win the one for the single. Yeah. If you call in with your spouse, you can win the one for the couple. All right, so I'm reading over the scenario so you get an opportunity and we'll let you know when you can call in, right? So imagine that after 10 years of marriage, one day you saw a letter in the mail from a bank and decided to open it. In opening the letter, which turned out to be a bank statement, by the way, you discover firstly that the account number does not match any of the account numbers that you know of. And secondly, several questionable transactions of large um, sums of money coming into the account, right? The questions are, and you have to call in and answer these questions for us. What would you think? All right, first question, what would you think? Second question, what should you do? And third question, how do you start this conversation with your spouse? All right. So my hubby here would let us know when the lines are open. The line's open. The line is open. You're calling a different number today. Yeah, tonight. All right. Remember, we're not, we're not at the, the studio. We're not at the studio. So the number tonight is 417-3178. The number tonight, again, it's a Grenadian number, 417-3178. So you can choose okay. to call um, direct or you can choose to call, call on, WhatsApp. on WhatsApp. It's up so, to you. So, so tonight Any, you're, you're, you you're a little call. free up. You could call direct or you can call on WhatsApp. The number, again, it's up on the screen for those of you um, viewing on YouTube or on Facebook. The number is 417-3178. So I think you should go ahead and read that thing again, <laughs> that scenario again. And... Um, uh, we want to give someone or uh, two, three individuals, well, a couple and an individual. Yes, like one that. couple and one single person. So, yes. if, so if your spouse not home, you could possibly win, you know, just for you, a single, uh, uh, the prize for the single person. But if you have your spouse next to you, we want spouse, both persons to be present and answering the questions for us. What <laughs> would you think? What should you do? And how do you start this conversation with your spouse? 
So, right. you, you read it over? <laughs> I, I want you to read it one more time. All right, time. so, I'm, oh, oh my goodness, I have to read it one last yeah, time. Yeah, because okay. I want to make sure they understand, all right? All right. All right. In the meantime, sure. y'all could call while I'm reading. You can call while I'm reading if you already heard and you already want to answer the question, right? You have a chance to win yourself a couple's prize from Nirvana Health Spa, all right? Or if you're calling by yourself, as the single prize, all right, for one person. So here's the scenario one last time. Imagine that after 10 years of marriage, one day you saw a letter in the mail from a bank and decided to open it. In opening the letter, which turned out to be a bank statement, by the way, you discover firstly that the account number does not match any of the account numbers that you know of. And secondly, several questionable transactions of large sums of money coming into the account what would you think all right so line officially open i saw that i missed two calls but that's okay you guys can call back oh my uh, take the call all right ready now let's go <laughs> all right so call back the callers who are calling apparently he probably was not checking his phone <laughs> call back call back so first question what would you think second question what would you do what should you do and the third question how do you start this conversation with your spouse all right good night caller your life good night right. good night caller so we have a couple <laughs> i like that uh, all right couple so you're gonna answer the three questions for us we want to hear how what would you think what should you do and how do you start this conversation with your spouse so, okay, so go ahead uh, what what do we think yeah yeah what should you do i think we decide we have one thing and i think correct we want them to choose any one of the three questions so what should you what would you think what should you oh. do and what and sorry how do you start this conversation with your spouse so among yourself you have to decide which one of the questions they're going to answer all right so you have to oh, answer you have to answer the three yeah yeah you so have to answer, answer the three you're not answering together <laughs> you answered it three so husband could answer one wife could answer two or what, whatever you decide but yes. you're answering the three oh, questions okay. right. yes uh, what would I do? I, I would like to know what business my wife is involved in. So that's the first of them. And we're bringing out the food. So that's why you would start thinking. Yeah. Okay. All what right. should, um, yes, go what ahead. What do? What should you do? What should I do? Well, I would address it immediately. Oh. With my phone. Uh -huh. I am taking a lot of things. <laughs> I'm already taking it. <laughs> 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 really, I'm <laughs> so that's how you start the con how do you start the conversation? Because you said you said you're gonna well, take the I letter to them. That is all? But so so yes, I'm bringing there to let them know that I found it. I got this um and it was really nice to know what's going on. So so <laughs> so so, 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 so tell me now. So imagine you're actually looking at your husband like you're doing now, right? Um and imagine you have this letter <laughs> in your possession and you're about to have this conversation. Let me hear how you would have that conversation. <laughs> Start Leah, start the conversation. Let's hear what you're gonna ask, what you're gonna say. And um Well the first thing I would say is um so babe what's this? So come. Babe, what yeah. are you gonna say? Babe, what are you gonna say? Would she ask you she ask you a question, babe? <laughs> <laughs> so there's one aspect to this um that I forgot to mention, right? Um, I need to put that in there. Um, if you do, if you do uh, become the recipient of this package for the couple, the the sponsor also would want your face on their social media pages. 
All right. Yeah. Hey, oh yes, we forgot so to mention that. that. Oh my gosh. So there might be a little bit of videography and photography happening while you're at the spa getting the service um, when the service has been rendered to you. So I want to make sure I put that in there. Sorry, I should have put it okay. earlier on. And if you're okay yeah. with it, um, I might just not give anybody another chance. But if you're not, then I might want to pass it on. But I don't believe you'll be so calm um, having that conversation. And, um, you know, I, I think you'll be a little more dramatic, man. Come on, you see all this money in that account. You see transaction going in and out. And, and take into consideration we, we were talking about the financial infidelity. Um, and you had the argument that our money go, our monies go together. And that's all we, 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 all we knew since we got married. So all of a sudden after that four or five years, boom, we realized the man have a whole lot of money in another account. I mean, another woman will rejoice. <laughs> 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 but, um, but what do you think you would, you think you would really rejoice because I mean earlier on you said that um, let me ask you what do you think what you said no I I, I answered that question and yeah. then, um, I would like to know what is this my you know where I listen to this yeah that is what yeah. Like, like where what like, and why is it that you keep this from and then what I want to so how would I make you feel then? How would I make you feel? Uh, whatever, would you, whatever, would you be happy? Whatever would you, reason you get, huh? would it make you feel glad or? No. Yeah. But I, because I'm um, a level of trust to be broken. Okay. But well, I like that you're being real. So know okay. that you're not happy. So the question is now, how do you handle it from there? <laughs> my, my answer remains. To begin with, I will be calm. Uh -huh. Maybe later on, things will better be treated. But to begin with, I'll be calm. <laughs> All right, we hear you. We hear okay, you. Okay, okay. Well, thank you for calling. And um, we're not telling you if you are the recipient of it just yet. No problem. But thank you for calling. All right? All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what's your, what's your, what's your, what's your TV? You find you like the way your TV um, was um, realistic, the, the way that they, they said they would handle it? Listen, the fact of the matter is different couples will handle different things differently. Mm. The way I might handle it. And again, this has a lot to do with your socialization, maybe how you grew up how you were taught, what your mother teach you, what your father teach you, mm. you know, your own That's personal true, experiences, yeah. whether or not, because some people in the past, they experienced mm. situations where trust was broken. Yeah. And if something like this happens, boom, they listen, they're blowing up. First thing they're doing yeah. is blow up. Well, let's not, let's not go into what they would do. Yeah. I just ask you, like, do you, if you like the way, that you think they said they would handle it. You think you think it's a good way that someone um, ex, ex, um, getting such a surprise in their relationship. I, th I think it's a it? It, I think it's a good it's a good well, way to handle I'm gonna it. Well, here's what I'm going to give somebody another another person an opportunity to hear how they will handle it. Lady Sabi, you're going to read that scenario one more time if someone is just joining us. And remember this this one here: um, a couple can win or uh, a give single certificate pick. for um, compliments, Nirvana. Um, they had spa or a uh, single individual, of course. You can, or even if you're yes. married, but you're calling, you know, your husband probably don't want to come, but you are alone, you can also do that. But we really right. like if a single individual will call and you know, yes, yeah. All right, so the number is on the screen for um, 173178. If you're listening on the radio, you can also call for 173178. All right, you're free okay, to call so and share you. Here. All right, good night to your caller. Good night. All right. Blessings, man. Nice. You need to turn on your volume in the background, right? Because you're going to be... Yeah, so... Yes, yes. I know, I know. All right. So you, you want to take the individual or you want to, you know, it's for you and wifey? Uh, yeah, yeah, wifey, yeah. All right, awesome. I like Good that. Night. So we want to hear how you guys would handle that situation. Tell us. I, I'm, a, I'm, 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 I think you understand what the scenario is, right? Yes, sir. What is the question again? 
the first what? question what would you think after you, what happened happened what would you think what going through your mind now what would you think yeah all right uh -huh. okay <laughs> so so that's that's in your mind right yeah uh -huh. you're not speaking yet you're just thinking about it mm -hmm. okay yeah. Okay, All so right. so what so what was man? What would you think? Well, um, I would be very much concerned. I believe that you know, based on the relationship that you have, you know, um, it's just financial issues. We share financial issues. We are always open about financial issues. So this certainly would hit me like a thunderbolt, especially. <laughs> If you know that there might be financial problems and you are struggling through some financial issues, that certainly will hit me with a, with a great deal of shock and I will be very, 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 very concerned. Mm. Okay. I like the word you choose, concerned. Concern. I like that word, concerned. So now that you're so concerned, um, what should you do then? Well, <laughs> I often like to, to address issues sometimes um, in a very calm way and sometimes in a very uh, comedic way. Mm. So in approach, I will certainly have to approach my wife. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I will say, well, you know, I have some very good news. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> so, so you're trying to you're trying to pull out that response basically yeah, in such yeah. a way. Right. That's right. All oh, right. nice. Yeah. All right. So when, when, when I do that, I certainly want to reach a response. I would say, "Oh, we plan to do this, and what I see, the kind of money I see inside here." Mm. It means that what's got to be done quite easily. All right, all right, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I, I, I would like to see it, so I might go to him and say, Dad, we make a good friend, and I'll come on, you're going to be on that. So, wait now. So, if he, if he gives in to what, what it is, you would leave it there from then? Like, if you say, hey, yeah, boy, I need to go to the bank and inquire. That must be a mistake. <laughs> what would you do from there then? No, no, no. I, I already have a copy of that to do my own investigation. All right. Okay. So, so now that you did your investigation, right, and um, you realize well, there's some truth in the matter, and the man have a whole job collecting money from Europe since before you guys were married, money coming into this bank account and he's been hiding it from you. And you know, all the months when you've been in need, and you say, Oh, we need that. And the man had enough money to even buy a car, and he's driving this old piece of car that I keep giving trouble all the time. I mean, <laughs> I, how do you, you know, how do you even start to. How do you start uh, that conversation? How, how do you know you? how you start in a conversation? Well, well, if that is indeed the case, I would be very good. Mm. So I will let him know how certain disappointed I am. Yeah. We would have built up a trust, and I think that you know, we are going to share things with each other. So I definitely let him know exactly what I'm feeling. Okay. Um, give him a chance to explain himself, you know, why is it that he felt he could not tell me what I'm telling you about? Maybe it's exactly where he was staring for our retirement, and he was like 10. Possibly, no. yes. Yeah, I don't possibly. want you. I don't want you to. When you start going that way, you, you add into the thing. You try to say you're justifying it. I don't like you going there. What? When no, you go, I, I, what's right? Yeah. 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 That's right. That's right. It could be that. It could be either way. It could be either way that he's saving up, or is that he's doing it maliciously? Don't want you to know. It could be either way. <laughs> That's that's okay, well, that's a say, good way. If you say you're not judging, then right, that's I, a good. I, I, I understand, but Jose, how what, what will your response? I know somebody will give me what they think is the best response, you know, because no, 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 when, no. It, when it reach, I want no, a real no. response. I you know I'm in the spirit here right now, and I'm discerning the tone and everything to make sure that you know, because I, yeah. the, the purpose of this scenario is so that someone you know 
who's out there who might just be going through something in the relationship and you know they might be approaching it the wrong way so i'm looking not for me to say it per se but to hear from others as to how they think they can go about starting you know because you know when you're when you're yeah. up on a situation um whether it's money or anything else the first thing is that you will start thinking yeah and after you, you come up with your to the you come up with a, a conclusion on the matter then you would start to say um you yeah, might start right. do something and then yeah. now you might talk but the way you might talk might not be the best way you know that's to right. remedy the situation now, so what would i have yeah. to i have to be in mind this is my sponsor talking about mm. right so you approach it i will approach it just like i said i told you yeah but it becomes even more serious now especially when you when you leave the cards and they don't want to know you know what's going on yeah right um of course, based on how things are happening in this world today, I mean, all kinds of things come to your mind. Yeah. But you have to be, be very careful not to go into the situation with a judgment. Okay. Well, I like right? that. That's where the case. It will, not, it will not facilitate the discussion that you already actually want to have, and it will not allow the person to begin to tell you the truth. Okay. Okay. That's just, that just human nature. Okay. Right? But if, when we when I start to ask serious questions, and that person, let's say that person begins to dodge, all right, let's say she starts to dodge and all of that, that is why because you're even more concerned. Um, and the whole issue of trust now comes to play in the whole thing. Okay. Okay. Right? Awesome, awesome. All right, but you know, my thing is that if, if she comes and she says, look, you know, it's a job I had, um, you know, uh, and it was, you know, because of my family, I had to this money from me, and I read it to you, know, so, you know, some kind of thing, right? right. Okay, I might be able to understand, but the thing about what I will be more concerned about is the fact that the damage to the relationship and to the trust that we might have had, and that we would have had before. Okay. The damage to that is, is, is a great concern. I mean, you're not supposed to allow money to come between us to damage each other. That's right. Right. All right. Well, thank you very much for calling. Thank we still you have so one, much. One last thing on the table. Um, we will tell you who it is at the end of the program that we decide to give that couple's gift. But thank you for your input. Your input. Your thank input. you so the much. Interesting, interesting oh, yes. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. So the, the line is yeah. the line still open in case anybody still wants to call in. Yeah. You, you want All a right. Single individual, a single individual to call, to call okay. in to give your people. input to give your input on and this scenario. Also remember with this gift certificate that you receive, um, your pictures will be taken and you know your video probably will be used for certain service. Um, that you receive from or the sponsor here on the day that you receive it. So again, I have my, um, I'm not, the thing about it, now ladies have been not going to even talk about it and see what is that person. So we will choose um, <laughs> who we think, you know, and you can see you're, you're looking at us now, so we can't <laughs> go and hide, but uh, based on our knowledge and based on the response that we get, we will make our decision. We will not allow you guys to decide that for us tonight, so keep watching and sharing. But at the same time, now the line's still open and uh, we are still... Give one more person yeah, an opportunity to call. Person. It would have to be a single person. Single individual. Um, if not, yeah. one couple would get um, a gift and then we'll give um, the other gift to, the, to a sing to one person, yeah, one person just of the one of person. the um the couple, the other couple that called possibly. Yeah. All right. So if nobody else is calling, but we can continue. Yes, let's continue. In the meantime, so we give you maybe about five minutes to call within that um, time frame. All right. If nobody calls within that time frame, then um, the two couples that call, one couple will get. The couples give, and I mean, then we'll give one, one person out of well, the couple. That, yes. All right, well, no, I'm so saying if nobody, nobody calls, somebody take the thing, call. a single person you has to call. To, what she to do here. Well, it's only fair. It's yeah, only, well, it's fair. only fair. Yes. So, if no single person calls, then we'll have to give out all right, the gifts. So yeah. Let's continue. So you have five minutes within that five period minutes. to call. Winding down. Yes. All right. So, um, 
So, so. Mm -hmm. we're talking about the difficult conversations and the scenario is still on the table, right? Yeah. But um, we want to talk about how really you should discuss, you know, some of the steps for handling difficult conversations. Yeah. All right? Some of the steps. I mean, look like nobody else wants to call well, in. You say you live five minutes window, so yes. let us, um, you know. All right? So... Excuse me. So difficult conversations. If you want to have a successful conversation, we're not saying that there's any one set way to mm -hmm. have a difficult conversation, right? Because as we continuously, as we, 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 we keep talking about every person is different, every relationship is different. How we may start a conversation, somebody else may start it differently. That's right. All right? But we want to give some tips all right, to allow you to understand, right, the proper manner in which you should approach a difficult conversation. Are we, are we saying we didn't hear how I will handle it? <laughs> we will talk about that in a minute. Aubrey, our next program, we'll talk about that. Tonight, you want to hear from the people. Hey, but share. Aubrey. So, one of the first things you should do if you're going to be ha having a difficult conversation. Um, if you're upset, <laughs> you need to calm down first. Yeah. You need my, to my calm down. Here, um, right? She says, uh, always start with prayer, asking God for wisdom and how to approach whatever the issue may be. That's and right. That's a, that's a good way. Excellent to place start. to start. Excellent place yeah. to start. And there's a reason why you should be that calm yes. and put yourself in that position because, again, you don't want to just jump to the conclusions because at that time it's mm -hmm. easy depending on the situation to to formulate um what ideas you think that that issue may be mm -hmm. and then you no know, address things from that perspective yeah, right so you, you're shooting guns because mm -hmm. you strongly believe in your heart and you're convinced that what you think is the truth is the truth and you mm -hmm. might just and you may not have all of the mm -hmm. the all of the details of what happened and you may just be thinking the exact opposite of what actually happened yeah. all right so you need to first if you're upset as we said you need to calm, calm down, down, calm down. Yeah. <laughs> you know before speaking um shift your feelings to ensure that you have a loving stance mm -hmm. by and my husband says think of three things yeah think of three things that you know you makes about that, your partner yes yeah. and, and the thing is is that even in that conversation, I love the way how um, the brother called and said um, that I will make fun of it. <laughs> so I would, I would say, hey, you know. No, that's a very mature stance. Yeah, yeah that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's because, a mature stance. Because when you're going that way, you see, yeah. then, you know, the Bible tells us that um, yeah. um, soft answer turns away wrath. Yes. And sometimes um, people want to address things too hard. So, mm. you know, it depends on how you go and start that conversation. The air that you, you give out is what will come back to you. You understand? What you what you what you send out is what comes back to you. Mm -hmm. So you have to manage how you handle, you know, your tone. And not just your tone, mm -hmm. because some people could come across like um, yes, the tone is one, but they, they come across yeah, in a, in a soft tone, but they but they they're saying things and the words that they use in the way how they put mm -hmm. it together. Mm -hmm. It actually can stir up things, and mm -hmm. it's good to know your spouse so that mm -hmm. you know what's the best way to approach them. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know your spouse just yet that much, because you didn't take the time um, when you're supposed to take the time to learn the individual, at least know enough because you can't fully learn somebody um, at different stage and in evolving life. We evolve as we grow as human, and relationship that happens. So you have to you have to leave room for that evolution so to speak in the marriage if, if you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. right the growth then that may come and some people probably stop growing altogether when one one might be growing and then oh my goodness there's a whole lot of problem right mm. there so you get the picture but the thing that we, we're going back to the mm -hmm. be calm yeah, it's it, it song it song difficult eh? <laughs> but you have to understand that saying things when you are not calm and doing things when, when you are not calm, when you're not calm, you're not thinking straight. You would mm -hmm. do things, you would say things, you would behave in ways that later down, 
a day after, when you think back, you say, well, I really shouldn't have do that. I really shouldn't have said that. that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, although I was right, you, I should not, you know, I don't have should, I should not have behaved yeah. that way. You want to be in a calm place, in a mm -hmm. calm state of mind. If it is that you have to walk away from the situation, take an hour or two, go somewhere, take a walk, go on the beach or some sort of thing. Yeah. Um, wherever you could find a little solace, a, a little quiet time to, and as, as the sister said, um, you need to pray. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right pray. Let's go. Let's go you, know? you know, time right. Time, so. Um, yeah. another thing that we need to do in dealing with, um, difficult conversations is to ask yourself, well, what really is my intention in having this, um, conversation, right? Is it, <clears throat> excuse me, is it a feel heard? Do I just want to be heard? Do I want to create a closeness? Do I want to resolve an issue? What, what really is the purpose of this conversation? What is my intent? Yeah. Is it that I want to store up things? Do I want to break up the, the, the marriage as a result? <laughs> what do I want to do? What's my intention? Yeah, yeah, Think yeah. about what, what you intend to do. And another thing you can do, Brother Audrey, <clears throat> ask you how I would handle it. Always take the side of your marriage. Um, be willing to, uh, I would say, separate the issue from the person, mm -hmm. right? So that is a, a good stance. And I think we said that on previous programs that in resolving the issue, all right, take the stance of saying, here's what, I need to not look at my spouse as that individual, um, as a situation rather. I know it can be really hard, depends on what you're dealing with, that the person get labeled as that, a, yeah as the situation mm -hmm. or, or the thing that happens mm -hmm. in their relationship. Mm -hmm. So you want to be able to be in a position where you um you know Separated I love issue. you mm -hmm. but we have an issue that we need to discuss. And we need so to I deal need with to put that issue aside away from you because there are many other things that I love about you and you know admire about you. And you can even start by talking about the things that, you know, you admire about them. Um, or af after you give, like, two good things, you could speak about a bad thing. Oh, Lord. Right? Yeah. So you don't just... Uh, don't don't just start with the negative. All the negative. Yeah, start bah, with bah, the positive. And, and then the stance you take in terms of um, how you communicate again is, like, you don't go pointing fingers. And when I say separate the... The issue, issue from the marriage, person. from the from the person. What I mean is, don't point fingers. So you see, for example, babes, I found I found this this letter here, um, and um, that's it's like have you know you have me thinking a lot, and I don't really want to you know um, go in this place where I don't mind to be drawn in this place where I start looking at you as um, that type of individual who is holding things back from me. You know, I love you a lot and I want the best for our relationship. I cherish our relationship. So um, I just would like you to tell me a little bit about this year. You know, try to be calm and you express it in that way. <laughs> try your best. And that's why if you if you don't know how to get that, uh, how to start that conversation just yet, you should really calm yourself down. Wait for the right place. Wait for the right time. Mm. Pray, you know. It's hard and talk about a person who who's not accustomed to praying because they mm -hmm. are persons who are accustomed to praying. So some people their natural response is to basically blow up and just say say how they feel because at this time I feel hot and the thing that you do is hurting me and I need to address it. I don't want to hear yeah, right there, right then. It doesn't matter where amongst your friend, whatever, you're getting it. Mm -hmm. But that is only going to breed a lot more issues in your relationship. So you don't really want to go down that path. You know? Another important thing is to choose the time. Eh? Yeah, well, like, yes, the I time, yes. Time, and, you, place time and place. Very, very important. You just, it, you can't just, you know, spill out everything anyway, mm -hmm. anytime. Mm -hmm. All right. Somebody just reach home from work and you just, you know, download on them. You know, I was waiting for you to reach home, blah, blah, blah. And down the line, you, you are more likely to get a, a, a negative response and and the, the conversation will go downhill from there yeah all right yeah. so choose the right space the right time mm -hmm. you know yeah, yeah. to to, to have that timing is not perfect mm -hmm. and you start it on the person or maybe sometimes the, the issue is so grand that you can't even deal with all at the same time sometimes you may need intervention again as we said earlier on mm -hmm. of a counselor or somebody who's more 
um, mature. Or not just not mature, just mature, but, but the right person. The person who you think is right as may not be a professional counselor, but they can give you counsel. Mm-hmm. You know, good, good, righteous counsel, godly counsel mm-hmm. in this matter that can help you guys resolve the issue at hand. Mm-hmm. So you may just want to take your time and um, mm-hmm. you know, seek that. Never be afraid to seek good, godly counsel. It's, That's right. It's important to help you to get from one point to the other and to work out your hardship because sometimes when you are bogged down with that thought you're not you're not thinking straight so you sometimes you just need that external um intervention yes, or that individual yes, to come yes. in and to show you things so your mind can a see different a different perspective angle, you know? yeah mm-hmm. right so how do you know that you're ready to have a difficult conversation we have yeah, we have just one or two <laughs> pointers yeah. here that you know we we don't know it all and we don't have it all yeah. and we we cannot tell tell you every single detail but these are some things that we thought that Mm -hmm. you know when you see this happening you know that this is a sign that you're ready to have the difficult conversation right number one you prayed and asked god's guidance in the matter so you don't do that already yes very important you're clear about what you you need and what you want so you, you you know what is exactly already examine your heart and you know you're not you're not I'm trying to look good, or mm-hmm. you know that kind of thing. You know what the like, needs you know are, what the needs are. Right. right? You know what you want. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Um, your goal is to create more closeness and love. Once you know that's your goal, you're ready. You want to create a better relationship. You want the love. You, you have that love there. You know you're ready for the difficult right, conversation. Right. And that right? conversation in itself, it will promote um understanding you know mm-hmm. it will promote understanding amongst Give yourself light. in fact it will mm-hmm. bring it will it will make the marriage come alive mm-hmm. you know some people run away from the difficult conversation because they figure it's going to cause the marriage to go downhill but i've learned in my what 15 years of marriage in july 25th um this year that when you face those difficult moments actually what they do is to strengthen the bond so mm-hmm. they, these are the things in your life to make you go from this place where your love is to this place, you know, mm-hmm. when you can love all the issue in somebody, listen, the love is becoming real. The issue shouldn't push you away, but it should cause Bring you, you now together. to come closer and um, see how much you love me with all my flaws. And I love you just the way you are. And we want to make it work so it can become that beautiful thing. For some people, it's a very difficult thing. So they don't even want to face it, mm-hmm. but you need to face it. Right. Nice. Also, um, you are ready to do what is necessary for repair and resolution. So when you're at that place, when you realize, listen, I'm really, I'm ready. All right. And my marriage needs to be repaired. It needs to be, it's broken. All right. Um, we're at a broken place or my, my, my wife needs help in this area and I'm ready to help her. You know, I'm ready to, to work on this marriage. It's in a broken place. When yeah. you're at that place and you realize I really want to help to do what is necessary to repair and to restore my marriage, you, mm-hmm. you know you're ready for a difficult conversation. Wow. And yeah. um, closeness with your partner is more important than harboring grudge or being right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what's more important to you? Isn't it being close to someone that you said, I do too? Isn't it um, having that walking in the will of God, that unity, mm-hmm. that oneness, right? So you could stand and say, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, and you're wrong, you're wrong. And what does that do for you? It just push you apart even more. Yeah? Also, I would say you've done some level of research, factual like information fresh, available, it, said, depending on what the situation she, she is. Research. Yeah, <laughs> because um, depending on um, what the difficult, yeah. depending on what your situation is, you need to do some research. True. For instance, um, and we, we talked earlier about um, somebody might need a, 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 you know, a kidney mm-hmm. or something of that. You need to do some research. Do some research if it yeah. is that, you, never know, you know, there might be something else, there out, there be something else out there that, that yeah. can assist you. So yeah. before having that difficult conversation, dot all your you eyes, cross your yeah. T's, find out, do some research, talk to people who know who possibly been through that, maybe some patients, you know, doctors at, at, at certain hospitals or whatever the case might be. Do a little research, find out the facts, find out. So depending on the situation, um, before you have that difficult conversation, get the facts, get yeah. the facts, get information. And again, 
in some situation where it's necessary, you need to speak to a professional to get, you know, good advice. You know, mm-hmm. you, you know, you know, if you have to pay for it, well, then again, it is worth it. It's an investment in your relationship and in your marriage. And everybody wants to have a strong relationship. Everyone I know that is married does not want to be in a broken home, um, in a broken marriage. Mm-hmm. Some people don't even want to get married because they feel like, hey, if I get married, the whole world is going to change and you know things will be the same and the man will love me the same way. But here's what. There's this thing where you call, that we call, and we always talk about it. We, we never got it, but we learn about it. And that is pre, what's it? Marital preparation. Pre-marital preparation. Pre-marital preparation. Mm-hmm. So before you get married, you should be adequately prepared. All right? And um, it's not just your eight counseling session we are talking about. It's more in-depth. You understand? Hopefully one day, God spare life, we'll have a marriage school. So the generation that is coming up, they will be able activate, to come activate. to that marriage school uh-huh. and get some good information prior to getting married <laughs> and we'll have more successful marriages, hopefully. One friend said As to me, result. he said, you know what, boy, them things always be talking about, I wish I didn't me before I get married, before I got married, because now I'm married and I'm in it. I have to fix it while it's in it. But nothing mm-hmm. wrong with that. You can repair it. And you, you could God always invest, invest in your marriage, man. People are investing in all sorts of things, but not in their marriage. And as we're talking about investing in your marriage, as we wind the curtains down and we will give you, you know, in order who we believe tonight deserve um, that Nobel Prize by <laughs> our um, wonderful uh, um, sponsor tonight, uh, Lily Sabi. So, um, I thought we were just going to call the, the, the people oh, afterwards. No, I thought we were gonna, just going to call them afterwards, not on air. So, you don't want to say it on air? Ah. Well, we just say one and two, so ah. that way they'll get it. I think it's only fair that we do that now. Come on. Right, <laughs> <laughs> right Ross? Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. See? So, um, yeah, we were going to say uh, next month, this month, actually, we want to, if we're talking about investing in your marriage. Oh, yes. So, uh, that's what we want to do to encourage persons to spend time together and build themselves and so forth. You know, so much other things you can do to strengthen your marriage. Pay attention to what's happening in your life. So, we have the Epic Marriage Conference happening right next door at Radisson. Um, it's coming up right on the weekend of the 22nd. So, the 22nd is a singles night. Yeah. Then we have the Saturday and the Sunday, all right, for married couples. So, don't forget, you can still get your tickets. Call us, call us, call us if you, if yeah. you need a ticket. You, you can, can still. You can call me on the same number that's on the screen. So, our friends who were with us the last time we did our program on marriage um they will be here so we still do the epic marriage conference and the dates are as as you can see on the screen for those of you who are listening via radio it is uh 22nd 24th right that's what the marriage conference and the singles night is the 22nd 22nd right yeah all right so if you want more information you can always you know connect with me but this one here is for the singles all right See if the date that is happening at the um St. George's, George's Baptist, Baptist Church, Church the Friday night. So you want to be a part of this. So guys, we are about to pull it down from here. It has been an awesome night here tonight. Good night oh, yes. to everyone locked on. Donnie, Cheryl, Shane, Joseph, Hollis, Benjamin, Candice, my brother, <laughs> um, Jody Daniels, and everyone else, Latoya Oliver, Ginell, and Dorsel and all our friends and families and on our chat right here took an opportunity to call my brother aubrey all the way in trinidad you know, suzanne in the u.s uh sister nautica in canada good night to all of you guys and on dog good night to you she's watching from i think she said um what's that the U- uk i believe G- uh, gb uh, i hope that's what i i see there no you know i'm short-sighted you have yeah, this yeah, laptop okay. real far from me i, I can, I can, I can hardly okay. see <laughs> Yeah, in GB with uh, Great Britain. That's where she's listening from. All right. So good night and good to have you with us. Okay, so guys, thank you again. Thank you, thank you to our sponsor. Um, this has been a very, very uh interesting program tonight, and um, you know, I'm happy to just be in this place here in a cool yes, night. Yes, it's so you know? I just feel cool. can we spend a night here? <laughs> no, they don't have bed or they have bed for massage, but oh it's so relaxing it. it's like oh so comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Trust me, I'll have need to come check out Nirvana's health spa. Yeah, so come check it out. Tonight, um in terms of who 
uh, going to be the recipient of these two See, prizes. That's why I didn't want to do it online. We have Suppose we one, one for the couple or two for the couple. What do you see? My take for for the couple goes to two. That's my my view. I believe, um, and I'll give my reason, but you can give me yours real quick. Um, I really don't like choosing. Okay, so I, I have made the choice. I really don't I've like choosing, choice, but, but let but, me let me say what I want to say, right? <laughs> like um, <laughs> I think we know both couples, uh-huh. all right? Um, one seemed to be a very young couple, uh-huh. and um, they shared their honest opinion and their, their honest um, ideas on how they think the situation should be addressed, mm-hmm. right? I think they were very honest and open in terms of how they think it should be dealt with. The other couple sound they very mature. So they're more experienced. And they, they're so more they, experienced. They and then, yes. So there was one couple that was experienced. The other one was young. So, so that's why I'm your, saying... Or let's say change your mind. You no, know, you see, that's why I told you we should have discussed but this. But that's okay, that's okay. I, I, <laughs> because I think I, I, I like your reasoning. Yes. Um, because obviously... The response would be different because obviously there are people who have been around longer in the marriage, yes. the marriage well, than the other. So yeah. experience and all of them things they have more experience. Very much so and, and I think and, what they shared was good enough. What both yes. both couples shared, um, whether young or old, it was it was good. Um and at least I, I, I would say you both uh, you have been real. Yes. You know, and yes. that realness is important when you're dealing and having um difficult conversation. But I still feel like I want to give couple number two the prize for the couple because they've been real and they they have um they 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 gave a few more things that I believe you can do. I don't know if I caused that because I asked questions, so I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what I'm gonna do, right? Um, for the tiebreaker, well, Lady Sabi, I guess she's leading to number one. I will allow five the first five persons that decide to send in the number if you decide couple number one deserve to get that price you will you will just put one just type one if you will pick up a number two type two you type two yes and together with the I, vote, I think that's a great way to we will go. um we'll tally it up no and, well if um, it's five if it's the first no five, five so the first, then that will be a tiebreaker the, whoever the first three it should so be. I'm, I'm looking on here so guys first, first one yeah First five or first well, three? five. So between the five, between the five. So if, you gotta say one or two. two. Get three, then we know number. You know, you get it. All right. So let's go. All right. So we want to. So we're waiting a, for the responses. Our, we want to give you guys an opportunity to help us out here, so that you know. So you vote. You know, Which couple should get the prize? Couple number one or couple number two? We take your vote for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some people probably check didn't. It online. Yeah, yeah. Some people probably didn't hear, but um. For those of you who heard the responses, you can click one or two. Yeah, we don't have the And we'll take your vote for it. Couple number one was the young couple. Couple number two was the older, more mature couple. (laughs) Like nobody in voting? Ross is in here. Ross, which one do you you think you want to Listen. (laughs) Couple two. All right, so. All right, so I'm seeing two. two. Couple. Okay. So I see one vote for couple number two. Okay, well, great. So couple two have it because couple number one actually voting for couple number two. So wait, wait, wait. No, we we do it the right <laughs> way. Do it the right <laughs> way. Two. Then we have one. Uh-huh. I have one on my here, but it doesn't show us here. So right now, um, so it's two for couple two one, for two, and 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 two for one because Ross is in here with us and he's saying it's couple number two. All right. So we need that. We need, we need to break it up. One, one last tie. Tiebreaker. So we have two for two and two for one. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. We're in the same place. All right. Let's see. Let's see. We're well, well, looking on. I ain't, yeah. I ain't see nothing yet. No. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. So who, nobody wants nobody to vote. Wants, all you, all you mean, all you putting us in that difficult situation. Come on, somebody. All right. Oh, <laughs> what is this? Yo, yo, what is this? I'll take this. I'll take this last one here. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> Casey, good night, bro. 
Hey. So he's a couple number two. I'm Lady Sabi. Based on the vote, right? It seems as though couple number one, one couple two. number one, couple number one, couple one. number one, one. I, I can't keep I going. I totally wish you had to do this. Well, off. no, that's okay. <laughs> we need to get the opinion of the hey. others. All right? So, couple number one, the other recipient of the gift for the couple. All right. And couple number two, you don't have to decide whether the husband or the wife is going to come and get their gift. Yes. Either way, I believe you guys will enjoy what the gifts are. Yes. Believe me, I don't <laughs> forget with this gift, you also, you know, we take some pictures and, you know, a little video and so forth for our beautiful sponsor here. All right. So Casey Thank just you. tried to tie a bit me, but nonetheless, we're good. So guys, again, it's been a pleasure um, joining you from this location here tonight. Yes. And uh, it's our hope that we can um, join you from another location. And Sometimes there's soon. something, you know, more awesome for you to, yeah. for you to win. So let's see how it go. Pray for us as we continue with that. And thank yes. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, again. All right. So good night. And uh, this Blessings, been... guys. Thank you again for joining us on Becoming One. We'll be back next second, month. Second. second. Remember, every second Friday we'll be on with Becoming One. It's yeah. been a blessing. So thanks again for joining us. And thank you to Nirvana. All right. Thank you to our thank sponsor. Thank you very much, Nirvana Health Spa. Yeah. Um, yeah, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Becoming one. For this reason, a man shall leave his mother and father and cleave to his own wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Becoming one. A program designed to strengthen marriages, challenge couples, and reignite our passion for loving, godly relationships. Join us as we discuss Kingdom Marriage Principles on Becoming One, hosted by the Sabazans. Becoming One. one, one.